Yesha Yadav is a professor of law and associate dean at Vanderbilt Law School. She joins me now from Rochester, Minnesota. Good to have you with us. Rosemary, thank you so very much for having me on your show today. Absolutely. So after Sam Bankman Freed's arrest in the Bahamas, he was denied bail Tuesday during a court hearing and will ultimately face multiple criminal charges next month with more charges to come in the future. What is his legal jeopardy at this juncture? Well, Rosemary, the picture looks extremely bleak uh, for Sam Bankman Freed today. Um, this is on a multiple different levels. Uh, first and foremost is the criminal liability here. Um, he's facing eight counts uh, of criminal liability, and these span the gamut. Um, and what we're seeing in this context is a potential legal liability that could be serious enough to land him in jail for life. So this is very, very serious legal jeopardy for him. One issue that the U.S. will face is obviously trying to extradite Sam Bankman fried to the U.S. Um, and that process could, in fact, take potentially months, if not actually years in some cases. So one one potential roadblock that the Justice Department here could face um, and that could give Sam Bankman fried potentially some kind of reprieve going forward are the extradition proceedings that we will that, that he will have to face in order to be moved from the Bahamas to face trial here in the U.S. All right, so if convicted, as you say, on, on all counts, Bankman fried could face uh, more than 100 years in prison, life <laughs> in other words. So what about the other people linked to his company and also the various stars who supported FTX? Tom Brady, his uh, former wife Giselle and, and many others. How liable are they ultimately, given some would not have known of the deceptional fraud? They wouldn't have known about the inner workings. Some would. Rosemary, it's a terrific question. Um, I think with respect to the inner circle that's running FTX, um, they are likely to face extremely serious legal jeopardy as well. Um, it's unsurprising that a case has been brought first against Sam Bankman fried This is a situation in which he is the headline grabber. He is obviously the head of the entire organization. We heard testimony today at the financial services hearing from Mr. John Ray III, who is the current CEO, that pointed to Sam Bankman fried as the person um, who is running this entire um, enterprise. And so we certainly have um, a very strong uh, culpability for Sam Bankman fried but obviously what Mr. Ray also pointed to was his coterie of other very close confidants that were um, in concentrated control, in Mr. Ray's words, of, um, of FTX. Now, what the indictment today pointed to was a series of conspiracy charges, conspiracy for wire fraud, uh, for example. Um, and in that context, when you do have a conspiracy, you are assuming that there will be other conspirators that will be involved in this context. So certainly, um, if you are connected to the very close circle of advisors that were running FTX at the time, there is every reason to worry that you are next in line to face legal jeopardy in this context. Now, right. looking much more further afield, um, for folks like the big stars involved in this case, as you mentioned, Rosemary, Tom Brady and the other big, big stars that were very closely involved in hyping up FTX, that is a harder case to establish. In fact, the other day, uh, one of the cases against them was thrown out. The hype potential is going to be harder to face because there's no real crutch there um, to say that uh, these folks were dece deceiving particular customers or they even knew about the problems that were happening at FTX at the time. So is Bankman Free the Bernie Madoff of cryptocurrency, as many suggest? And what needs to happen next then in this industry that clearly requires more checks and balances? It's clear, Rosemary, that FTX and SBF are the poster child for everything that has gone wrong in this industry. Um, they were not just the bastions of the industry itself. They were the, the, they were the, the ones that made this industry usable for the average everyday consumer. Um, they were the ones that made DC feel comfortable that, in fact, crypto could be taken seriously and legitimized for the mainstream. And for the private industry, they were the ones that made crypto able to be financialized and included in parts into the mainstream financial system. Um, and so what happens next is going to be critical, not just for the everyday investors who are waiting to get their money back, but it's going to be critical for the future of the industry itself, because this entire industry now will depend on a return to confidence, the ability for, for, for users, for investors, for stakeholders to believe once again that there's something here to actually put their money into where they can feel safe, where they feel that this, that this actual technology has some real use value where they feel that if they do have 
uh, risk on the line, that that risk is controlled and mitigated by some very basic checks and balances. Um, as made clear in John Ray's testimony, for example, there were really no adults in the room in this enterprise. It lacked something as basic as a board. And so it's a real time for reckoning in this industry. And what happens next is going to be critical for its future going forward. Yeah, most definitely. Yesha Yadav, thank you so much for your analysis. Appreciate it. Rosemary, thank you so much for having me.